All right. Um, okay, Native American preference. All right, we got people here chiming in, chiming in, chiming in. Um, all right, Native American preference. Okay, here we are. We got the reads here, everybody. We're doing the reads. Native American preference. Hey, Billy, little boy, blue. I'm commenting on the last podcast about Native Americans versus Indians. Yeah, I was saying every uh, Native American I ever met. I haven't met a lot. They all say, you know, I'd rather be just called an Indian. Uh, As an actual card-carrying, quote, Native American, I think Indian is still the preferable term. In fact, it's in our tribal name. I'm probably going to say this wrong. The Seneca Nation of Indians. In an informal survey of my res, still pretty much prefers the Indian term. Maybe because Native American sounds like a PC term or just because the American term is still an example of colonial terminology applied to natives. In fact, native is probably preferred over Native American. I got the hiccups, sorry. So there you go. This person goes on to say, it still doesn't help everyone thinks we're of Mexican descent and speak Spanish to us whenever they can. I live in Boston too. I got numerous examples. Oh, Jesus. (laughs) Anyway, have a good one and go fuck yourself. Um, yeah, so there you go. All right. Application. Yeah, that's the amazing thing about like all of this stuff. Like, I don't think like these nicer names, obviously you can't say a racial slur. I'm not saying to say that, but these just continuing to improve on the name, but never really trying to undo some of the wrongs or whatever. I mean, I don't know how you would do that, but like, um, I do think that, you know, they need to like, you know, with history, you can't just have the people that won, you know, turning the people they murdered into mascots and team names or name streets and golf courses after them as a tribute is kind of, you know, I don't think that's enough. Um, it's weird. The whole fucking thing is just weird how it's all teams. So you don't like my Italian friends get so fucking mad that they're losing Columbus Day slowly but surely. And they're all like, fuck that. He never did that shit. That's bullshit. He never. <laughs> it's like, dude, who, who the fuck knows what happened? Nobody's saying you did it. You know? Every race of people has their sweethearts and they also have their Jeffrey Dahmers. We just need to just fucking, you know, take everything out of the cabinet and align it up the way it should be and we can all fucking agree on it. I don't know. I, don't, I just don't understand, like, uh, At this point, what the problem is. Okay, Native American preference. Uh, Okay, I just read that one. Uh, Appalachian Appalachian writing in about the ignorant South. All right, so here was my thing. All of this shit came about when I was watching the World Series. And, um, you know, I'm trying to root for the Braves because they've been there for so many times. And uh, every five seconds, their moron fan base is fucking doing the tomahawk chop. So I don't know. I was just thinking about it, and I just came up with this theory that, you know, maybe if northern whites treated southern whites better after the Civil War or somehow got over the fact that they tried to secede from the Union, you know, the bad blood ended, and they didn't, you know, try to fiscally fiscally fuck them over and have prejudices against the accent and all that type of shit and showed them some empathy and late-night talk show hosts didn't constantly do jokes about Southerners, you know, fucking their own sisters and hillbilly shit. Maybe they would be more empathetic. And when people said, hey, you know, that Tomahawk Chop thing, uh, you know, you might want to think about that. They'd be like, all right, you know, I'm open to that. Um, It's just an idea I had, right? I don't read. So this person is writing in about the ignorance, Appalachian, writing. So he lives somewhere in the Appalachian Mountains. Dear Billy Turkey Titties. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> turkey tits would have been better. I still like turkey titties, but turkey tits gets it's you get the alliteration almost three times because the E ruins the T. Titties, turkey tits. All right, there, turkey tits. I mean, that's fucking great. That's right out of Jerky Boys. Um, this this letter is already a winner. Turkey tits. I uh, heard your podcast. 
where you briefly mentioned your theory that if Northerners were more compassionate to Southerners, then maybe they wouldn't fly such blatantly racist flags or be more considerate of other cultures, etc. Yeah, basically paraphrase what I just said. I've lived in West Virginia since I was around five years old. Because I choose to further my education, because I chose to, Jesus Christ, too stupid to read his fucking sentence in my language about education. I still fuck it up. And because I chose to further my education, because I form my own opinion based on facts and refuse to let social media like Facebook brainwash me. You sound like you're fighting it, sir. Fight the good fight. And, uh, and a smaller, and I, a smaller percentage of folks my age aren't hateful and ignorant like the people before us. All right, something happened when you rewrote that sentence. Anyway, he goes, it doesn't mean we're not piss poor, though. Uh, what so many people fail to understand is that places like West Virginia are essentially third world countries inside of the United States. West Virginia spe- uh, specifically was stripped of its resources by coal companies. And while reaping the benefits of coal, paid miners next to nothing and fought tooth and nail with the military at their side to stop them from unionizing. Google the Battle of Blair Mountain. See, this is more shit that should be in the history books. Now, here it is. This is, uh, this is white people fucking with uh, poorer white people. What a surprise. Um, the Battle of Blair Mountain, B-L-A-I-R. Look that up uh, if you want. Uh, poor funding across the board from infrastructure to education is a main factor in what makes people ignorant and hateful here. Yeah. Yeah. That, I mean, that, that, listen to me. Every once in a while, you know, broken clocks right twice a day is what they say. I think I stumbled onto something. A huge portion of people here don't even have access to the Internet. Uh, with a piece of shit like Joe Manchin, Mankin in office to represent this place, you know that nothing is being done to help poor people. The fucker just shut down the billionaire tax, even though zero billionaires live in West Virginia. Our governor, Big Jim Justice, is also a fucking idiot. Please tell me that's his name. Um, here, is, here he is reacting to COVID numbers a few months ago. I don't want to watch another guy in office just fucking ignoring doctors. Uh, The people that have brains and intuition to make this state better end up leaving because of all these factors above. There's practically zero opportunity here. And I'll tell you something. I've been to Virginia. It is a fucking gorgeous state. Absolutely one of the most beautiful parts of this country. And the fact that, you know, and there's no news even about this shit or what's going on down there. Uh, I could go on much longer, much longer rant about all of this bullshit, but I'll end with this. West Virginia is a beautiful state, see, filled with untouched wilderness and huge potential to be a state like Colorado in the future if we did things like legalize marijuana and put money into the public education and infrastructure. Yeah, in some way there would be a tipping point and they would just start building fucking glass towers and all of that shit. So I don't know. They would just fucking make everything all corporate. Um, but I, I hear what you're saying. I wish there was a way to just help out your state, you know, without having all the corporations then descending down there because people have money. Uh, the reason that it's destitute is because of the rich taking advantage of our resources and our people. Huge fan of everything you've done from your stand-up to your character on The Mandalorian. I'm a little behind on efforts for family, but I plan to binge it all once the last season drops. I'd love to see you do a show in Charleston. I'd love to do one there. Um, thank you. Uh, he says, I know both Bert and Tom are going to be here soon. Uh, well, if those two guys are going there, Jesus Christ, I don't need to go there. Those guys are going to destroy. Thanks and go fuck yourself. So there you go. There you go. I like hearing it. Come on, man. Everybody write in. I'll be like the fucking, the Michael Moore of, uh, of podcasting. Except what, what I won't do is act like Canada is this super happy fucking place where you don't have to lock your doors you know, and nobody does anything bad to anybody. There's never any riots. And they love when a person, you know, who isn't white plays hockey. They always have wonderful experiences in the minors. Um, why Southerners do weird stuff. Here's another guy writing in. Hey, Billiam of the Crimson Sack. <laughs> I 
like that. That's fucking, you know, if I knew what my family crust was, I might have that written in Latin underneath it. Um, been listening to your podcast for a few years now. First time writing in. Love your stand-up and your podcast. Keep up the great work. I was listening to your podcast uh, from last week, uh, November 1st, 2021. Um, and heard you wondering about why people from the South do stuff like fly rebel flags and other stuff that seems stupid and or outdated. Um, yeah, I'm going to stop short of saying stupid because I don't want to be like fucking, you know, I don't remember how bad I did in high school. So I would just say, uh, you know, the lack of empathy. Dare I say the pride and kind of going out of your way, you know, to hurt other people. Is, is what I find confusing, you know? But then again, I have a crushing need to be liked. So, you know, anyway, I'm from North Carolina, go Tar Heels. And I see things like the rebel flag pretty regularly. The attitude generally doesn't seem to be one of hatred towards a certain people or anything, but usually one of regional pride, parentheses, love must spread. I do think that there is an element of spite involved in a we're still here kind of way but it seems more defiant than anything. As for the attitudes of people from other parts of the country towards us Southerners, meaning Northern whites, people on the coasts, uh, it's rarely ever a positive one. No, I used to do a bit in my act, you know, something you're going to touch upon here, I can see in the next sentence here. I'll, I'll read your shit first and I'll do my bit. I have a degree in electrical engineering and have kept my accent since moving out of the South, but I get funny looks from time to time or even straight up told my accent sounds uneducated. Yeah, think how fucked up that is. You know, Mark Twain was a Southerner, right? There's a bunch of super smart fucking Southerners, but I'm too stupid to remember all of them. But um, I used to do a bit in my act saying, like, if if Albert Einstein had a Southern accent, you know, no one would have listened to him. He would have been up there, you know, and I pointed, I can't remember if I did this on my first half hour. Be pointing at the board going, A equals MC squared. And people, shut up, you fucking moron. Come on, man, I'm serious. This fucking shit works. Um, Something like that. But that is true. There's a prejudice against your accent. Sometimes it's a bit more subtle where people will say something like, wow, I didn't expect you to know so much as if I didn't spend eight fucking years in college. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I loved about the late, great Vic Henley. Vic Henley kept his, uh, his accent and was a super smart guy with, you know, being a super smart guy, had really smart material. And I used to love watching him killing in New York City. Um, and he never really addressed, at least all the years I watched him, he never said like, you know, I don't really remember. He just sort of talked about life and would crush. Um, anyway, now, granted... We're easy to make jokes out of, and we're one of the few groups of people left that it's considered safe to make fun of or mock just for the circumstances of their birth. So I can't fault people for hanging on to that. But it, doesn't, but it does foster a bit of resentment, especially when you see people act like there's not other parts of the country just as ignorant, if not more so than the South. Well, hey, I've been to them all, and I can, I can definitely tell you that the, you know, the East Coast meathead, myself being one, could give you Southerners a run for their money. Um, Yeah, I just went to a football game today. I saw a lot of great people, saw a lot of animals. I mean, you go to a sporting event, the fucking animals come out. Um, Yeah, so, yeah, there's one for you. I think just in general, if people, like, we're just going in this really bad direction of... um, egos and name calling and if people people could just sort of fucking relax a little bit and just step back and kind of be good we could go back to maybe a little common decency but then you know that that doesn't even make sense because there was you know air quote common decency decades ago i feel but like a lot of other shit was worse so i don't know i don't know what the solution is you know, when, when's Jesus going to be done with that nap? I mean, when exactly is, how bad does it have to get before he comes back and is like, oh, Jesus, you have to come back down there, you know, fucking settle things down. Is that what he's going to do? He's like, settle things down, you know, 
Like shit's getting out of control in this squared circle and he's going to come running out of the locker room like a fucking wrestler? Is that what's going to happen? All right, question. Hey, Billy Bucktooth. Uh, My name is Carson. I'm a 19-year-old from Iowa. I've been listening to your podcast for a little over three months now and I'm a big fan. I listen to your shitty podcasts on my long walks to school and from... Long walks to and from school and let me tell you... The stupid ass looks I get uh, from laughing at your jokes makes the walk even better. Oh, that's great. I, I got to get out there, man. I want to say I have a gig somewhere out there. I've got one question you, for you that I always try to ask people that look like they've made some mistakes. What's one thing slash piece of advice you wish you could have heard around my age? Only one he said, I'm fresh out of high school. Here she says, fresh out of high school, now a sophomore in college. I want to hear from the man himself what he wishes he did or didn't do. Should I do that bowl of meth <laughs> or keep on rolling on with college and join the math team or some shit like that? Best of luck to you and keep rocking. All love from Iowa. Keep rocking, man. Um, fuck, the one piece of advice, dude. That's too big. It's too big. Uh, you know what? I love when I, I get like a variety pack from a cigar company. So why don't I do that? I'll give you a variety pack of shit that I wish. Um, uh, don't be so hard on yourself. Um, walk up to her and say Hello. Who gives a shit? You, then you don't have to carry the, the fucking what if for the rest of your life. Uh, don't get a credit card. <laughs> um, uh, fuck, I don't know what else. What else? Learn about money. It's too big, dude. You're, you're making my head explode. I'm, just, I'm fucking running in 50 directions. I, I fucked everything up. I fucked everything up. Um, I don't know. I would say if you want to run for public office or something like that, you know, that's what I would do. I would treat my life in a lot of ways like I was running for public office. So I would really be careful about anything that you you sent or whatever on the Internet or or joked around with through text messages and shit because they seem to – Go back eight, nine, ten fucking years and just try to destroy your fucking career. This is what you send them. You guys, by the time you know you're of age to go run for some big office, a big thirty years ago, you said this, and it's just like I'm not the same person I was fucking thirty days ago. So um, I don't know, dude. Just try to be a good person. Life isn't as tough as you think it's going to be. I would just, you know, really fucking enjoy all aspects of life. And you know something, getting old too is not a bad thing. And unfortunately, you're actually going to realize it's a blessing someday if you're uh, unlucky, you know, to lose some friends along the way. And uh, because that's a real mind fuck, you know. Some of the friends that I lost at such young ages, and I met them when they were super young. And if you told me when I met them that they were already halfway through their life, I mean, I don't even know how I would even handle that. So, um, all right. I think that's enough vague shit that I could tell you. I, I think I, w- I would, if you ask me something a little more specific, maybe my fucking ADD wouldn't be bouncing all around, but like really be careful with money. Okay. Marry somebody that you love, that you're crazy about and that like, it, it's easy. They're easy to hang out with. They should feel like a friend. Um, yeah. I'm so, oh, God. And I'm going to open all of this stuff. If somebody's treating you like, if it's work, get out of the relationship. If, if it's just a friend or like a girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever your thing is there, just get out of it. Just get out of it. Just, if you have to just sit there and think to yourself, well, maybe if I acted this way, would things be better? It, that, that is right there. It's over. The second you're thinking like, I need, I mean, unless they're calling you out on like, you know, like my wife going like, you got to, you know, quit yelling at fucking appliances in the kitchen. I mean, you know, there's certain shit you have to fucking listen to, but other stuff you can just, you know, 
if I'm like, okay, maybe if I pretend to like this kind of music, then will they not be upset with me or will they like me? Yeah, fuck all of that. Fuck all of that. And pay attention, you know, as you move through life, if you start doing well and, you know, people who you thought your friends started acting weird, yeah, you let them go too. That's how that works. And then one day, you know, you're sitting alone in a fucking hotel room in San Jose with nobody to call. No, I'm kidding. I had to make a joke at the end. All right. Um, let's plow ahead here. That was the question. And then I got one last thing here. And then I got to go do my show. All right. Book recommendation. Dear Billy Book Smart. <laughs> I know you're a busy man. But I really think you should download an audio book called Tribe by Sebastian Younger, spelled J-U-N-G-E-R. He's a writer who served in Vietnam and has spent his life learning about cultures from around the world. He details what it, it is that makes humans feel fulfilled. Oh, shit. Maybe the person who asked that other question, maybe read this book instead of listening to my dumb ass. Uh, interesting things like the phenomenons of communities go through hard times and now in the present looking back on those times as the best times of their lives. Okay, interesting. I'm sorry, I didn't read that right. Interesting things like f- the phenomenon of communities going through hard times and now in the present looking back on those times as the best times of their life. Uh, lots of it comes from how they connected and felt part of a group. It goes way beyond this. He reads the book himself, which makes it more compelling. It helps me clarify certain thoughts I was having about where to live, what size, city, or town. Please, please download this and let me know what you think. Thanks and go fuck yourself. I might check that out if I have some fucking time to listen to somebody read me a book. Does he start with Once Upon a Time? I don't want to fall asleep. (laughs) Anyway, um... Let's see, how long did I do here? Did I do enough time? Did I do my time? Yeah, hour and six minutes here. A uh, couple things I got to cut out. Uh, to tighten the fucker up here. Like this right here. Um, all right, that's it, everybody. Thank you for listening to the podcast. Um, go fuck yourselves, you know, and uh, except if you're down south, you know, have a wonderful afternoon. And I'll check in on you <laughs> on Thursday. Thank <laughs> you.